Cannon. You're listening to a podcast from DigitalOilAndGas.com. This podcast is entitled Modernizing Oil and Gas Royalties Using Digital. Recently, there was a press announcement on the use of distributed ledger technology and robotic process automation to handle oil and gas royalty payments. The implications of this move are simply too big to ignore. A Calgary-based oil and gas company working with key stakeholders, which included other oil and gas companies, a regional bank, and a royalty specialist, has created an oil and gas royalty smart contract on distributed ledger technology and executed a payment based on that smart contract. You could treat this as much ado about nothing. Smart contracts are fundamental to DTL, uh, DLT solutions. No new revenue is created, and certainly innovation in the back office in oil and gas attracts a little more than yawns from the engineering world. Accordingly, there are a few modest press announcements about the event, but the implications are pretty substantial and worth a deeper dive. Let's begin with what's a, what is a royalty. The oil and gas industry generally operates under some kind of hydrocarbon royalty regime. For those not familiar with this aspect of the industry, royalties are a kind of economic rent paid to the parties involved in hydrocarbon development and extraction. Take, for example, the case of a gas well located in a farmer's field. The rural landowner will expect to be compensated for the inconvenience of having continual company access to their land. The well pad may no longer be used for grazing or cropping, and trucks and rigs need rights of way for tracks and laydown areas. Accordingly, the farmers paid a share of the profits that come from the well's output. In Queensland, Australia, these well pads are the single most valuable acreage on the farm based on cash proceeds per square meter. Wells may have more than one owner, as in the case of joint ventures involving two or more oil and gas companies, and over their lifetime, wells may be sold wholly or in part to other parties. To add to the challenge, wells can be in operation for decades and have to be handed down from one management team to the next, and of course the land can be sold too. Governments are deeply involved in royalties. In Canada, the hydrocarbon resource is actually owned by the province, who in turn sets out the provincial royalty calculation. In Australia, the states own the resources in much the same way as in Canada. In the U.S., the landowner owns the rights to whatever is extracted under their land. Internationally, governments will set the royalty rates for resources extracted in their territories. You would think the math to calculate the royalties owing to the various parties would be pretty straightforward, but it's not. Sometimes governments want to stimulate development of resources in specific areas, and so the royalty rates may be reduced. Sometimes certain costs are deducted from the royalty calculations in an accelerated fashion to stimulate activity. Sometimes specific rules are in effect for certain time frames. And when governments change, they often can't resist tinkering with the royalty rates to extract more revenue from the industry. Finally, it's a trick to anticipate all the different costs that could be incurred against the well and the rules for sharing those costs. In any case, the parties to the well get together and agree how the revenues and costs are going to be divvied up amongst them and write up the sharing agreement in the form of a contract. The contract then becomes the basis for determining who is owed what. In international settings, the contract might be called a production sharing agreement. Oil and gas companies must then employ an army of back office production and royalty accountants, lawyers, and systems professionals to figure out the math each month. And this system has been in place forever, and its sole innovation in 20 years has been the introduction of spreadsheets to help do the calculations. As you can well imagine, a system like this is prone to error. There are hundreds of thousands of wells, paper contracts, and corresponding Excel spreadsheets that need to be maintained. The parties try to maintain their own separate records. The effort is largely manual, the calculations are monthly, and the calculation formulas change frequently. Larger players might have their own dedicated systems, but that's pretty unaffordable by the smaller guys. The formula and the spreadsheets are frequently wrong or out of step with the contract or no longer current with the prevailing rates and rules, and the wells may have changed ownership. The system can be manipulated. Royalty owners suspect that well operators are motivated to exaggerate the costs and minimize the value of the production, which distorts the royalty value. And the operators may delay the royalty payments to manage cash flow. Suffice to say, the industry is rife with disputes which incurs leadless legal fees, the occasional court challenge, payment delays, and ever more complex agreements. Unfortunately, the system is highly resistant to change. In early 2017, I met with the senior vice president of a leading Canadian oil and gas outfit to discuss the impacts of the commodity pricing down, uh, during the downturn, by that time well into its 36 month. He was quite proud to point out that while his company as a whole was well into its third restructuring, there had been no impact at all to his finance and accounting teams. Well, there are a variety of ways to apply digital to this problem. A huge volume of English language contracts that need specialists to interpret them correctly and low levels of trust between counterparties. First, how about natural language processing? 
the royalty agreement must first be, quote, read and interpreted properly. This is essentially a human problem to extract the clauses that are the basis of the royalty calculation. Well, actually, this is now a machine learning problem and has been solved a number of times already. The combination of AdLib and IBM Watson is one solution in use at Swiss Re to ingest and interpret legal contracts. The key is the availability of the technical specialist that supervise the machine as it learns, i.e. the royalty expertise. Number two are the robots. Robotic process automation then takes over, mimicking the keystrokes of a human, and builds the computer instructions for a smart contract on a distributed ledger based on the interpreted agreements. And last but not least, distributed ledger technology itself. The smart contract is finally posted to the blockchain for automatic execution once key conditions are met. Presumably, the availability of the data that's used in the calculation of royalties, such as the revenues, costs, and rates. It's pretty easy to see why oil and gas companies, landowners, government, and regulators might want to modernize how royalties are handled. First is to eliminate disputes. Disputes have long been seen as a cost of doing business, but in the downturn, that cost looms larger on a relative basis. Next is to accelerate cash flow. No payments happen while a dispute is outstanding, so elimination of disputes accelerates cash flows for the royalty holder. Royalty holder. We're talking a lot of cash. CFOs ought to like that. Third is cost reduction. There are two kinds of cost savings here. Fewer disputes mean lower administration costs for both the operator of the well and the royalty holder, so both parties gain. The second cost saving comes from reducing the monthly effort to calculate the royalty, which is automated away. Reduction of both costs means the royalty value should go up, which should please government and royalty holders, and of course, CFOs. And then finally, you have a more nimble business. When royalty rates change, smart contracts will be much easier and faster to adapt than Excel spreadsheets. There should be a reduction in the uncertainty and volatility in royalty values. Investors should like that. So what does this use case of machine learning coupled with distributed ledger uh, technology smart contracts mean for oil and gas? Well, how about exploiting other areas? Royalty calculations are just the first of what could be a new wave of artificial intelligence applied to oil and gas. There are many other kinds of paper contractual agreements in oil and gas that could benefit from this kind of machine learning and smart contracts, including services agreements, land and lease agreements, supply chain contracts, procurement and purchasing contracts, in addition to joint venture agreements. Oil and gas companies can take advantage of these capabilities as they up their game in AI and distributed ledger. Next is the rethinking of ERP. There are a number of large-scale ERP deployments and upgrades presently underway in the oil and gas industry, and many more to come. This use case demonstrates how some ERP processes could be quite different using digital. Smart contracts on digital distributed ledger technology may not require invoicing, receivables, and payables processes. ERP deployments could capture significant new value with digital enhancements. And last is the impact on human capital. This royalty example points out yet again how digital technologies are impacting what would be considered high-end, privileged jobs in legal, accounting, dispute, and land. The future of work in oil and gas companies is going to look very different. Well, here's some advice for oil and gas executives. First, executive sponsors need to be challenging ERP teams about how distributed ledger technology, blockchain, and machine learning could be applied to business processes. There's clearly too much back office cost at stake. Next, human capital leaders in oil and gas need to get ahead of these technology developments to help cushion the blow to headcount. And finally, CFOs in particular need to prepare their organizations to embrace these new technologies. DLT and machine learning will come quickly to the industry since the industry loves to follow a leader. The future of finance should feature a lot more smart machines. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitaloilgas.com.